can listen the machine is very silent yeah when you pause it is just a small total harmonic distortion eh? but it is better than the previous one eh? yeah there are whole types of sound eh? yes back again with another video now previously we tested this amplifier it worked fine the only problem was distortion and noise and i promised to show you how you can solve that problem now if you have not watched the previous video i'll be putting a link somewhere on the comment so that you can check what we did previously then now let's solve distortion for this board and now this is the board as you can see there are so many wires running around eh? now the causes of distortion there are only two one is this fan and another one is called ground loop i'll explain them now the fan you see this fan uh, it has been given 12 volts from this point here these are 78 12 that gives it 12 volts now this fan has only one job to cool the heat sink but now you see 12 volts on this fan makes it to do over spinning now it does a cool job for cooling but now that over spinning causes a lot of noise eh? and again the over spinning makes it to vibrate you see it is embedded on the board at this point eh? now that vibration is sent all over to the board and will cause some kind of distortion and a lot of noise now to solve that one i'll be giving it I'll be replacing it with a, a bigger fan. You see this one? Yeah, we are going to replace it with another fan which has bigger blades. You see this one? So this one can blow a lot of air even at low, at a lower voltage. Now, when I'll be putting this one in a box, I love to remove these speaker connectors so that now we can have the wires for the speakers and we also want this heat sink to be exposed to this fan. This fan is big and we'll have to place it somewhere strategically blowing hair towards this heat sink. Now you can see it can cover all this area and then when hair is blown you know it's continuously it can flow thoroughly through these compartments you see. Each compartment will get the hair and then it can keep blowing conventionally that way it will be cooling the heat sink now it's this source for 12 volts i'm going to use it to power my this bluetooth device eh? now these two yellow wires eh? i'll explain about them later so we we'll love 12 we'll tap 12 volts from this point yeah this point and then it is the one that we are going to use for our Bluetooth device. This fan, I've said, it will be using a 5 volts charger. 5 volts is enough. These blades are so big and they can blow hair quietly, smoothly without causing vibration, but doing their job for cooling. So that's one. Now, number two, and this is where you see a lot of wires. Eh? We have something called ground loop. Now, ground loop occurs when we have multiple grounds you see like this one eh? there is uh, the audio ground uh, this point eh? this is the audio ground there is also the power ground when we come to the board there is also another power ground the transformer is there now all those grounds eh? if you try to measure you will find they have been mixed up and when they kind of rotate together they move together they cause something called ground loop now to solve that ground loop we need to find all the grounds that are in this board, eh? starting with the audio ground, the power ground, even all these points, eh? apart from the capacitors and the transistors, eh? don't touch those points where we have the transistors, eh? all these other points, because uh, if you can, if you touch this thing with your bare hands when it is working, eh? you will notice there is some kind of distortion, eh? that means there is a way it is also connected to the board, so I have this wire running from this point, to this other point, to this other point, to this other point, and it flows through to this other point. This point, it is the same as the ground where we have this white wire. If you measure any ground here, even from the speakers, even the speakers themselves, 
They are all hooked from the ground. Almost everywhere. Now that we have that ground, we need to ground it to something called chassis ground. Now chassis ground is a point where you can reference all the ground to one place. You just find the one place for reference. You see now this one is the one that is connecting all the grounds. This one and also the audio and this one. So I normally use the casing of the transformer as my cases ground. Now when you have a cases ground this one, eh, there will be a, a point of reference for all the audios that are here. So that the if it is power if it is the power ground it will know its path. If it is the audio ground it will also know its path. As long as you have a cases ground it will act as ground reference. And that's why we have this uh, this is called cable link. I'll be attaching it to the transformer when I'll be screwing it to the uh, amplifier box. And now you can also include something called earth ground. And sometimes eh, you might realize that there is some excess, you know, power flowing to the ground. You know, this one won't be. This is the AC, eh? and they say it is 220 volts. Eh? Sometimes you realize it is 221, 219, 217, it goes back to 220. Now that causes some kind of fluctuations and some power may come to the ground side. That's why we need to have something called earth ground. And uh, this is the connector that I'll be using. This one will be the live. And this one will be the neutral. And then the third wire is just, it is called just a connector. Yeah, live neutral and then this is the add now this one is normally connected to uh, this kind of cable this one yeah you need to connect it that way and then now you can have your live your neutral and the add remember the the add we are also attaching it on the casing of the transformer but I like them to be a little bit spaced I need the cases ground to be this point here so that now the earth ground can be somewhere here we need to give it some space eh? yeah so that the cases ground can work properly and if there is excess electrons and power they can flow through this one all the way to the ground then they'll come to this point eh? also make sure your extension eh? You must have to invest. Eh? You must have to spend some money to get rid of the noise. Yeah, make sure you have a good extension like this one. It has ground. You see this? It has this breathing. Eh? You see? It has ground. Then from there also make sure the socket you are using is also grounded. But that is the work of the wiring guys. That way we will have to eliminate the, uh, this kind of extension that I was using previously. It, it only has live and neutral and no earth. As well as this small cable. These are only two points. Live and neutral. We'll be replacing it with this one eh, that I've showed you. And you see some of these Bluetooth devices. Eh? Some are silent, others are not silent. Like this one, you might find some brands which are silent, others are having some kind of distortion. Therefore, I like to replace them with these big ones, the square ones. Yeah, these ones tend to have less distortion eh, as compared to this kind of to the devices but they will also cost an additional expense eh? now with that setup being done you will be guaranteed of eliminating almost 80 to 90 percent of the noise now after soldering and connecting it is going to look like this one eh? i had to find a small box enclosure to support these parts so that's there we have the uh, connector, power connector, with the two wires coming into the transformer. 
then the charger there 5 volts is to rotate this fan and then now these are the wires this is for the display these 12 volts coming here i'll explain to you what the use of these yellow wires eh? there are two positive and negative and then the signal is connected there these are the knobs and then the other thing yeah we have started from the knobs these points three or four of them then the same ground is connected to the sender this white wire the sender is the ground it is the one that you see all the wires running through so i've also picked it from this point and taken it all through and taken it all through to this point that's where we have connected it with the screw eh? and then this is the case's ground and then uh, the earth ground is from this other side passing all the way to the now this is the final setup you can see the fan is very quiet it's rotating very slow but it is pushing a lot of air the heat sink now here it is about to rain uh, the, with this setup you'll be able to remove about 80 percent to 90 percent of the distortion the little remaining distortion will be coming from this audio player this one eh? I'm yet to figure out how you can remove completely from this player but you see these things are very sensitive eh? especially if this antenna wire comes to contact with the ground it will be the end of the player it will reach H1 you see this H1 eh? yeah that one and that will be there so let's test it is about to ring Yes, that was the experience. You can listen, the machine is very silent. Yeah, when you pause, it is just a small total harmonic distortion. Eh?
but it is better than the previous one yeah here there were host types of sound now there are these two yellow wires that we have here this is pos positive and negative these ones are to connect an eq now suppose you want to connect the Boschman equalizer to your green board <laughs> we'll do that one in our next video so watch the next video after this we are going to upload about how to connect Boschman equalizer and the green board